So in the last video, we looked at a broad overview of using SOLIDWORKS for cabinetry design. And the example we looked at was a set of frameless cabinets. In this video, I'd like to take a look a little bit deeper at some of the more micro level details of modeling cabinetry in SOLIDWORKS. And we'll also take a look at an example of a framed cabinet. So here I have a simple set of drawers. You can see that we can simulate assembly motion as well. So if there's any hinges or mechanisms involved in there, we'll be able to simulate range of motion, check for interferences and things. But there's a couple things I'd like to point out here because the actual housing for this cabinet is of a framed construction. So if we look at that in more detail, we'll see that we have some individual one by twos making up this frame. And anytime I want to work with that, I'll actually use the weldments tools within SOLIDWORKS. Now, this is originally intended for those big structural steel welded systems in frames, but we have customers using it with good success in woodworking industry as well, where we can basically just do a kind of a stick, stick drawing of the, the profile that we want to create uh, for this cabinet frame. And then we'll basically assign the particular profiles we want to it. So we use the weldment tool here to basically just pick on those lines of the, of the 3D essentially stick drawing that we created and assign a particular profile such as here I have some custom profiles created for different woods. And you can create your own custom profiles if you have special millwork, ground profiles and things that you need to be using. Uh, those can be saved back as weldment profiles so you can reuse them easily and just anytime you have a line segment, just apply that profile to that line segment. One of the other benefits of this is it'll automatically produce what's called a cut list which groups together the identically cut items here. And it also allows us to build a table that we can populate over to our drawings that will show us basically a stock list of the different types of material we need and the individual cut lengths here. We can tally this up to achieve a total length that we'd need for the entire project to help with ordering and quoting. You can see the details on the joinery and the individual joints. We'll talk about that more in just a second some ways we can automate that inside SOLIDWORKS. So to look at that, I want to actually jump over to one of the individual drawers here. So I'll open up. This is one of the drawers that's kind of a work in process here. Um, started off again as just a simple 2D sketch. So I can lay out multiple different shapes within a 2D sketch and then just choose these different regions that I want to extrude out into 3D. And then I get to a stage where I have the basic shape coming together, but I need to start adding my joinery. I need to start adding the panels and, and different things that can be a little bit monotonous. So anytime you run into repetitive design tasks, uh, we can use the design library over on the right hand side of your, your SOLIDWORKS tree to create what we call smart features or smart components that can help automate that. So here I have a few created for uh, woodworking type applications such as a recessed panel, where I can basically just drag that panel in onto my screen, drop it. I'll choose, in this case, I want it to be indented. And basically, this gets defined on a dummy part, it gets defined on a kind of a blank part or, or another part that I want to use to define this feature. And it asks me to select some references from my current part on the screen to locate these. So I need to choose, in this case, it's showing me on the left here, the top face of the part. And then I basically need to choose the inside and outside corners. So I can choose here, say the inside corner, and then also the outside corner, and then the back edge of my part, and it will place in and size a panel for me. And I can make adjustments to the size if I need to, but just by clicking the check mark, I'm gonna place in that new indented panel. And kind of the power here is if I look at a cross section of this, if we look at a particular cross section of the model, we'll see that it not only placed in the panel, but it also cut away the appropriate clearances to any of the mating parts as well. And of course, as we add these, we can apply those materials once again uh, and appearances if I'm not happy with you know, the appearance there. I can go over to some of our built-in wood materials and drag and drop onto the model. And we can have additional control over texture, orientation, things like that. Now, similarly to that recess panel, there's some joinery I wanna add here. So I have some joinery uh, features created within my library here. So here I have a box joint. I'll drag and drop onto the model. And again, choose those locating 
references that it needs. If I ever get lost, I can just look at that preview box in the top right corner. So this will place the appropriate type of joinery for me. So now I have a set of drawers created with the recessed panel and joinery I want. And the beauty of this is if I need to create other versions of this now, I can just edit that underlying sketch and I should be able to modify, create any, any different length of this that I need or any other width or depth of these drawers. Once I have the initial model created and it's all parameterized, I can make whatever adjustments I need to uh, to the design here and have everything else update accordingly. So. If you do have to create a bunch of variants of the same type of product, I don't have to create you know, 10 different files. We can actually store those different variants as multiple configurations within our SOLIDWORKS files. Or we can use something like a design table, which is a Microsoft Excel table that can be used to drive your designs, drive the various parameters. So once again, in summary, this video covered just a few details of the modeling process of woodworking with SOLIDWORKS focusing on how we can automate some of our things like joinery by using smart features and smart components in our design library. And we also took a look at doing design of framed cabinetry using the weldment tools, a structural member tool, where we can create our own profiles for the various woods we're working with and basically apply those profiles to a single line drawing. Again, these are just a few of the aspects of modeling cabinetry in SOLIDWORKS. If there's particular features you're interested in, you want to see more videos, then please let us know in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching.